Good morning students. This is Asha, your social science teacher. We were left with few questions. So we'll discuss those remaining questions today. The question last we discussed was how was were the affairs of Jatis regulated? That was done. Today we'll discuss about the next question, question number eight, which was what does the term pan-regional empire mean? So we studied about that pan-regional empire. The term pan-regional empire is applied to an empire which stretches over many regions. And in your book also we saw Muhammad Tughlaq's empire. The Mughal empire is a good example of such an empire. Right? So that is pan-regional empire. Now let's move on to the next question from your book. It is... What are the difficulties historians face using manuscripts? This we have already discussed in chapter. What all difficulties we face while using manuscripts? While using manuscripts, the historians face number of difficulties. Manuscripts were written with hand and as a result, there were small but significant differences between any two copies as we discussed if we are copying and if you are not able to understand a handwriting you make your own small change the scribes who copied them introduce some changes as a result historians have to read different manuscript version of the same text to guess what the author had originally written so if a historian is studying a manuscript and that particular manuscripts have seven copies, so he has to read all the seven copies to clearly understand and guess what the author wanted to write. Because while doing seven copies, many changes were introduced. This is the handwriting. Plus there were few more reasons which we discussed. That was personal biases and exaggeration of a particular event or a situation. These things also happened a lot. Many times scribes introduced or added some exaggeration in writing due to some personal biases. Plus we studied that they were court poet. They were given a job by a king or a ruler to perform. So in order to make that person happy, they used to write in this way. Next question is, how does historian divide the past into periods? Do they face any problem in doing so? Yes, we discussed that as well. We divide history into periods and this division also is faced and has a lot of problems. The first question which we see, historian divide the past into period based on the economic and social factors which characterize them. In doing so, they are faced two problems. First, economic and social changes keep taking place, hence definite boundary cannot be drawn. So, whenever these people are doing writing history. They see in this particular time, this particular social change came. And in this particular time, this change came. But changes were happening. So giving a definite boundary becomes a difficult task. Second, these periods are compared with modernity. Modernity gives a sense of progress. This implies that there was no progress before, which is not true. This also we discuss that Indian history is divided into ancient, medieval and modern. So modern is the period 18th century and after. But in medieval period also, there were many technological changes which took place like spinning wheel, which revolutionized the textile industry. Persian wheel, helped in irrigation, firearm in combat, 
All these were modern changes and they happened in medieval period, but we are calling modern period a period after 18th century. So it is also not true in a sense, this kind of division, ancient, medieval and modern, because modern changes were happening in ancient period as well, as well as medieval period. You must have heard, read about the art and science, technology, everything was there. Shushup and there were many other authors who did surgery in ancient time. So medical science was also quite developed. Plus the planet and the sun, all these calculations were done in ancient time also. So it was also modern. So this division also face a lot of problems. Now let's discuss this. Compare our map 1 and map 2 with the present day map of subcontinent listing as many similarities and differences. Children, this you do as a homework and uh, as in first page of this chapter you can see these maps here. This map, this one is map 1 and this one is map 2. So once you have a book you can do, you can see the changes and the similarity. You can find, point out what are the similarities as well as what are the dissimilarities. Next question. Find out where records are kept in your village or city. This question. Find out where records are kept in your village or city. Who writes these records? Is there an archive? Who manages it? What kinds of documents are stored there? Who are the people who use it? So yes, this also you can take it as an activity or a homework. Like in a village, you will be having a tehsil office or patwari office. So or are all records kept there? Or if you live, or definitely we live in a city. So in city also there are many records. Where are they kept? Who writes these records? And is there an archive? Because we studied there are archives which safe and securely preserve the old documents. So for whatever being written, is there an archive for it? Who manages that archive in that particular city or of that particular office? What kind of documents are stored? If you have an archive, so what all documents you store in the archive? That you need to find out. And who are the people who use it? The documents which are kept there, who use them? So this all is the question answer discussion for this chapter of your NCRT book. I'll be sending all these question answers. You can learn them, right? And if you have a notebook, you can write in that also. Otherwise, you can learn them. Okay, that's the end of this chapter. And tomorrow, we will start with the geography chapter 1, environment. Okay, so be prepared with that. We'll start with the chapter 1 in geography, environment. Okay, thank you.